Hello, welcome back to our channel, Elevation Chapter, the channel that promotes human connection, spreads positivity to recover humanity. To all our returning subscribers, thank you for being a loyal family. And in case you are new here, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of our videos. It's very obvious our content will benefit you since you are a human species like us. My name is Nelly O. Today's video is inspired by last week's video. In case you missed it out, please find the link in the description box below. Ostensibly, people have different ideas on what forgiveness is, what it should be, and how it should look like. This video unveils Myth number one, forgive and forget. How did we even get to that line? How? Our culture has baked an unrealistic notion of forgive and forget. That in order to forgive successfully, we need to forget the wrongs done to us. Forgive and forget. Ah, how is this possible? How does it happen? Well, from experience, at least we know if your bar for achieving forgiveness is elimination from memory, then my friend, you're setting yourself up for chronic frustration. We can't control what memories stick with us or not, but we can control our attention. So forgive and forget, mm -hmm. simply know you don't have the ability to control your memories, but you have the ability to control your attention. You can choose what to focus on and what not to focus on. Myth number two, forgiveness is one decision. Forgiveness begins with a single decision and it doesn't end there. It is not an event. It is not a one-off activity. It is a serious intentional process. A firm decision and commitment to forgive is the very first step you take. Of course, there are very many steps depending on how emotionally strong one is. Because look here, you will still see that relative of yours at family gatherings. You will still have those memories pop up in your mind time and time again. Your efforts to reconcile with someone will not be reciprocated. You will even find you have to sleep with your spouse in the same bed that very night. People will continue to ask you about the person that wronged you. All this sometimes reverses your feelings and you start to feel terrible again. That's why forgiveness is not a one-off. You have to embrace yourself to do it all the time. It gets easier with time. It's an attitude, a habit of the mind. Myth number three, forgiveness restores trust. Mm. Let me share something I read. There was this family, one of those extended families, they discovered that one of the uncles in the family molested and abused kids. But as a family, they addressed the issue internally and forgave him. After some time, one of the mothers in the family was asking if the same uncle could babysit. Forgiveness doesn't mean restoration of complete trust. Instead, if there were about five layers of concrete trust stuck together, definitely one, two, three, four, or even five, all of them can easily be removed. Myth number four, forgiveness versus acceptance. The word acceptance has been misinterpreted by many when it comes to forgiveness. It has turned out to mean different things to different people. The challenge some people have with such a word is that it confuses them to kind of mean endorsement. That somehow you are okay with what happened or that you justify whatever happened. No. Acceptance means acknowledging that you don't have the power over the past. So you choose to let go of the desire to control the past and instead open doors to control the future. You can accept an offense against you without excusing it. 
Myth number five, forgiveness versus justice. Mm. This might be a bit confusing to some of you, but let's pay attention. Forgiveness is not neglecting justice. You can decide to forgive someone even when they are under the confines of law. Because the sin and the crime differ. Where the crime is under the law and sin is under religious boundaries. So even if you forgive, the law enforcers will apprehend the criminal. And at times, forgiveness without justice causes lingering resentment on the part of the victim. So one can be punished for their wrong actions in society and still be forgiven. We have heard of stories where the victims at times find it difficult to forgive even after punishment in the confines of law. For instance, if there is a loss of life, it's hard for the victim's family to take it in smoothly even after the punishment. All in all, one can choose to punish and forgive because forgiveness is not neglecting justice. Myth number six, forgiveness requires reconciliation. Many out there have been wronged and they assume that they must achieve reconciliation with the one who wronged them. You can hope for reconciliation if you so wish, but please don't expect it. We talked about this in our previous video. You can find the link in the description box below. It takes two willing people and parties to reconcile. The difference is that willingness doesn't happen at the same time. That's why as an individual you can forgive without reconciliation. Okay, those are the six forgiveness myths we prepared for you. Share the video to help someone in your circle. But before I go, let me share how I have grown to handle forgiveness with ease. Let's take an example of your illiterate grandmother. Assume you have a project deadline and definitely a couple of things have to be executed faster to beat the deadline. So you decide to delegate some of the work. You remember the only person at home is your grandmother. You go ahead and call her to request her to start typing out a few pages for you. On your arrival, you find your grandmother seated right in front of the open laptop. Nothing has been done except opening the laptop. What do you do? Do you get disappointed? Maybe yes, because you thought she could do it since she's always by your side as you work. Do you think it was intentional? Of course not. She tried. She even opened the laptop, but she only did what she knew how to do. So you can't get angry at her. You can't act like you are at her level. That's how I have grown to forgive with ease. If someone does me wrong, I do get hurt, I get disappointed, I get angry at times, but I quickly remind myself that that's the best they can do because that's the best they know how to do. So I avoid to play in the same mud with them because I know I am better than that. So of course, I focus on what's more important and no longer hold the wrong against them. And then what do I do? I move on. Today is court. I think the first step is to understand that forgiveness does not exonerate the perpetrator. Forgiveness liberates the victim. It's the gift you give to yourself, TD Jets. Thank you for watching. We shall meet in the next video. Let's go and start giving ourselves gifts, gifts of forgiveness. Let's so. Cheers.